Eddie Kramer is here. Uh, you, you worked with Kiss for many years. Uh, one ah. of the earlier questions, <laughs> uh, and uh, and 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 half a Kiss, from what I understand, uh, are pretty focused, and the other half, uh, you know, had their troubles with drugs and and, and things. Uh, how, how did Gene Simmons remain sort of so clean from from that sh- sort of shock rock era? Well, the story is that um, I did their demo, which got them their record deal. Wow. Um, so you're responsible for them. Well, yeah, I, I guess, yeah, in a funny sort of way. So here's, you can imagine Electric Lady in, in the 70s, right? And I see Gene and Paul walking up and down the hallway and doing their thing. And they had a record that they did called Wicked Lester. But it was freaking terrible. I mean, they were trying to sound like the Beatles. It was freaking horrible. And that was kind of their goal, though, to be the Beatles of, yeah. of the heavy world, right? It went out and straight in the bloody <laughs> toilet. So I get a phone call from uh, Ron Johnson, who was their p- producer at the time, and he says, hey, Eddie, look, Gene and Paul got a new concept. It's a heavy rock band. Do you want to do a demo for me? I said, yeah, sure, no problem. So I said, all right, if we're going to do this, let's do it the old-fashioned way. Four-track, Studio B, half-inch four-track, blah, blah, blah. On the appointed day, all the lads walk in, and Ace is late. Ace Fraley, I I love him dearly. So Ace walks in, and I swear to God, this guy was so thin, if you turned him sideways, he would disappear, you know. He was was driving a cab in the Bronx, you know. And he plugs in, and it's like, fuck. This is the guy. I mean, he was he was the heart and soul of Kiss. I think, from a from certainly from a guitar playing point mm-hmm. of view, um, and you know, Peter Chris, you know, hey man, I'm from the Bronx, you know, I'm tattoos and all, you know, I'm Italian, you know, dude, hey yo. But it was great. Those boys were so cool in those days, and you know, they we did the demo, and I'm looking. Okay, you're Gene Simmons, right? Yes. <laughs> Jay Brody, by the way, uh, Eddie Kramer. Jay's the greatest guy. Gene, yeah. so Gene's sitting next to me, and he's got this book right here like this, right? It's a, And I'm looking, I'm working away, and I'm looking over, and it's every page has a drawing of each of the characters that are going to be in Kiss, all perfectly sketched out with a description of what they're going to do, how they're going to do it, how they're going to dress, and what, they, what their whole image was. And if you flip the page, oh, there's Gene, right, with the tongue and the whole thing. There's, there's Paul with the star and Peter and so on and so on. They, he had the concept. Like storyboarding. They knew. It was all planned. Storyboarding. He planned the whole thing wow. out. And I remember seeing them at the Hotel Diplomat with their manager, the lately departed uh, Bill, Bill O'Coin. And I was backstage and I was looking at these guys and I was going, Wow. They can't play in time. They can't play in tune. <laughs> but there's something magical about these guys. It's like Kabuki Theater, which is exactly where they got it from. So there you go. And then they went off on the road. They did about 18 months, two years of on the road. Bill Coin used his American Express credit card, put up $40,000 to put, keep him on the road. And they built up a fan base, much like the way we try to do it today, except we didn't have the internet, but they, they, each one of them had to get fans to sign in, which was cool. So they built up a following of 300,000 300, fans. Wow. I get a phone call from Neil Bogart, who was the head of Casablanca Records. <coughs> and he says, hey, Eddie. Uh, this is like a couple of years later. They'd had three albums out, and they did very well. You know, okay. Um, we want to do a live album with Kiss. Are you interested? I said, hey, Neil, I... Uh, can I call you back in five minutes? Okay. Hang up the phone. Sitting on my desk is a tape that I just got in from a guy named Tom Schultz, Boston. It was the first Boston demo tape. And I, I, I called him up and I said, Tom, I can't add anything to this record. It's fucking great. Put it out. And I put, hang up the phone, call Neil. Yeah, okay, I'm going to do it. Why did I want to do it? Because it was a challenge because of all of Imagine being on stage with these boots and you can't play in time, you can't <laughs> play in tune. What a challenge. And that's how we did the Kiss Alive. And you made it work. And you, do, you still, do, you, do you still hang out with them? Do you still talk to Gene today? Yes, yeah? absolutely. Yeah, he lives about 20 minutes from my house. Is, yeah. is he always trying to plug and sell you stuff? Of course. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's Gene. That's, yeah.